When I started the homebrew challenge to brew all 99 beer styles, I knew I'd be brewing some beers that I really, really enjoy. And I'd be brewing some beer styles that I wasn't really all that familiar with. But I also knew that at some point, I'd have to brew that damn smoke beer. Well, today is the day. Let's brew some Rao beer. So smoke beers, why? Why? There's, there's actually an historical reason as to why. Originally, all beers were smoked beers. That the malt was dried over an open flame and that would result in the malt having a smoky characteristic to it, which would eventually get imparted into the beer. When kilning became more popular and by the 19th century, almost all malt was kilned, then that smoky grain really went away. And as I'm giving you this, uh, this little history lesson, I have 10 pounds of uh, smoky malt right here over my shoulder. And uh, whoo, the whole brewery already smells like a bonfire. Now the wood that is used is going to make a big difference as to the sort of smoke characteristic your malt is gonna pick up. And when I went down to the homebrew store, I saw that they had multiple different types of smoked malt. Now, from what I understand, peat malt, well, that's for the truly brave or perhaps truly stupid. I've heard nothing good whatsoever about peat malt. Uh, the two main ones that you will typically see are cherry wood and beech wood smoked malt. And I went for cherry wood. So let's get to it. What are the ingredients for my, uh, my rat? Alex, how do I say this? Hey Martin, it's pronounced Rauchbier. Thanks Alex, it helps to have a German friend. I'm, I'm just gonna call this beer smoked beer from now on. So what are the ingredients I'm gonna use? Well, the, uh, the star guidelines say that you can add between 20 to 100% of your grist be made from smoked malt. Most recipes I looked at online were sort of in the 20 to 30% range. I figure if we're gonna do this, let's go all in. So I've gone 95% smoked malt. Specifically, uh, that is cherry wood smoked malt, 10 pounds of this. And uh, the funny thing about that is when I went in the homebrew store to, to pick this one out, it came in this tiny little jar that only had three pounds in there. So they had to bring out this, uh, this big sack for me to, to get my 10 pounds worth. So I think 10 pounds is probably a, a pretty unusual purchase for this. Now, in addition to that, I do have some specialty malts as well. Um, I have Caramunic One, uh, four ounces of that, and four ounces also of Carafe Special Two, which will get me to that slightly darker color that I'm looking for. Then, just in case that isn't quite smoky enough, I'm gonna be sprinkling some of the ash from these cigarette butts into the beer as well to make sure I really get that smoky flavor. The cigarette thing was a joke. Really, don't do that. Okay, so I'm gonna mash this at 152 Fahrenheit for about an hour. I'm looking to get a gravity of 1053, which is gonna give me a beer around five and a half percent. You can really see here that Craft Special 2 has done its job uh, giving this sort of darker brown color. This is a SRM of about 15. It smells like, like something's on fire in here. Hops wise, I have as my bittering hop, Perle hops, one ounce of this will go in at 60 minutes. 
And then at 10 minutes, I have Halatel Mittenfruh. I have half an ounce of that. Overall, this should give me a beer of about 27 IBU. And in fact, I do believe it's, uh, it's time to add the Perla now. The beer is coming at 10.53, so right on the money. Uh, I managed to chill it down to about 63 Fahrenheit, and now I'm just using my, uh, my usual process of putting that in the chest freezer, where I will drop it about another 10 degrees in there um, to get it to about 50, which point WLP 830 again. German lager yeast is going in. Uh, if you're wondering why this is uh, such a small little flask, uh, that's because I decanted it out of a bigger flask, uh, moved this in here so I can make another yeast starter. You know, I'm both simultaneously looking forward to and dreading tasting this beer in about four or five weeks. Well, it's time. It's time to taste this thing. Uh, the fermentation notes, this came out at 10.15, 5% beer. Um, did struggle a little bit to find willing volunteers. Lauren has somehow agreed to do this, so. Yes, and no. I was kind of excited because I heard it was like smoky. And yeah. bacon, and I was like, okay. It is supposed to be those things. And then so, I, I looked at it. Yeah, so, so let's talk about the appearance of this because this beer is supposed to be very clean in color. What would you uh, say about that? Like a clean toilet? Yeah, it's like mud in a glass, isn't it? It's awful. Yeah, it, does, <laughs> it does not look in any way appealing. It's not attractive at all. No, I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe it just needs a bit longer. This beer is about five weeks old, so it should have had plenty of time to clear up, but it hasn't. There is definitely a smokiness to it. There is a lot of weird smells going on in that. To me, like, you know if you've been to, like, a bonfire the night before, and then you smell your clothes the next day? Yes, I do. I have a story about that, and I smelt my clothes for seven days because I forgot where I stashed my sweater. Well, that... And that is exactly what that smells that's like. That's the smell. It's, it's the stale bonfire smoke, I think. Never have I less wanted to taste a beer, but I'm gonna keep an open mind with this one. Let's, uh, let's... This is... What is it? I still can't get over the smell. <laughs> Cheers. Bottoms up. <laughs> well... Oh, it, I tell you what, it's the drink that keeps giving because you think the flavor's gone and then it hits the back of your throat and again. And it's still there. It's, it's still there. If I have to make this face every time I sip it, it's not what I'm gonna order at the bar. <laughs> now, as far as smoked beers go, we took this one to the extreme with the amount of smoke malt that went in it. Because I thought, if we're gonna make it smoky, let's make it smoky. Uh, and I think it's quite fair to say that the smoke flavor from the malt has definitely imparted itself in the beer. Yeah, it's definitely there. Um, but in a completely overpowering way that I can taste nothing but smoke. I don't like it. <laughs> well, I don't like it, I'm sorry. I'm not, I, <laughs> I am not offended by that whatsoever. This is absolutely the worst beer I have ever made, without question. We're gonna bring in another taster. He's gonna regret this. Oh god, that's so bad. <laughs> that's my review. 